record. Cool. Okay, folks. So welcome to the OLS recruitment webinar for the um, community researcher um, and coordinator position that we're looking at for the moment. Uh, so I'm going to start with a few housekeeping related notes, and then we'll get on with the rest of the call. Um, so this call has live captions. Uh, that just means that a machine is automatically transcribing what I'm saying. You can follow along on your screen. You should be able to see where it says live on otter.ai. Um, and if you click on that, then you can actually follow along on the captions as well. Um, or there is a link on line 17 of the Etherpad. And when I'm looking over that way, I'm looking at my other screen. I promise I'm not ignoring you. Um, so we also have a code of conduct. Um, it's basically we request that when you are participating in our community or representing our community, that you um, behave in a way that you'd like to be treated by others with respect. Um, there's always more to it than that. Uh, code of, codes of conduct are not just one line saying be nice. Um, if you want to take a look, that's, there's a link to it on line 18 of the Etherpad. Um, and if at any point you experience or witness unacceptable behavior that isn't in line with the code of conduct, there's instructions in the Etherpad about what to do. That's either emailing team at openlifesci.org, which reaches the OLS organizing team. Um, or if you're worried that it was something that was one of the OLS organizing team did and you'd prefer to speak to someone individually, uh, we also have our individual emails so that you can just email one of us to report what may be going on or discuss your concerns. Um, Hopefully there won't be any needs to worry about that, but it's always important that we share that at the start. Um, so thank you to everyone who uh, shared the icebreakers. That was uh, a nice way to fill a few minutes while we were just waiting for people to arrive. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit about OLS now. Um, so I haven't prepared any slides, mostly because um, I think we get a lot of slides and sometimes it's nicer just to be a bit more organic. Uh, so um, OLS, um, Open Life Science, has been around uh, now for about two and a half years. And three of the organizers are here today. So um, Mavika, can we have a wave, please? Amazing. Berenice? And I, I'm Yo. <laughs> um, I'm Executive Director of Open Life Science. We also have a fourth organizer, Emi Tsang, who's not with us um, in the call today. Um, and we are dedicated to open research. So um, basically, we all come from research backgrounds. And over time, I think we, we, we observe that sometimes it is a bit harder to share your research openly than it might be due to a mixture of um, it not necessarily being taught um, and due to academic incentives that don't always incentivize sharing your research in such a way that it's easy to build on one another's shoulders. Um, so we work in a variety of locations at the moment um, as the organizers, uh, but all of us have at least a little bit of paid time where we can dedicate to OLS as well, or we will do soon. Um, and so we run two cohorts a year of training. Um, and by cohort, what I mean is that we have applications for people who are interested in uh, working on a specific aspect of open research. So they already have a project idea in mind, they're interested in open research and they apply to participate um, to apply specific aspects of open research to what they're working on. Um, and the goal with this is often not just the specific project that they're working on, but also that we might give them longer term skills that they can then apply to other projects and to other parts of their research when they're working. Um, and when I say research, I also try and uh, we try and take a very broad view of this. So this also includes roles that are typically considered to be research adjacent or non-academic um, or research support roles. They're all things that research wouldn't help with, wouldn't happen without. Um, so we try we try to take as broad a view of what research is as we can when we're talking about this. Uh, so we previously were a fully volunteer organization. Um, we did we operated OLS one, our first cohort, on such a shoestring budget that we were having to borrow Zoom rooms from different organizations every week uh, when we had our calls. Um, we slowly has managed to ramp things up. So cohorts two, three, and four, we actually had a little bit of funding from some fantastic backers, including Code for Science and Society, the Alan Turing Institute. 
Um, and these days we're actually lucky enough to have um, funding to have people working on this full time, hence the webinar today. Um, so we're really excited with the number of applications we've seen and the number of people who are here right now. Um, it is going to be such a tough choice. We have seen so many incredible CVs already. Um, I've put some links in the etherpad. This is um, optional homework, but I think it's just some of the things that try and represent the views about reasons that make us special. So I've added on line 39 a link to our YouTube channel, which is where this call will go later. Um, and it just allows you to view some of the cohort calls so you can see the kinds of things we teach when we teach about open research. Um, and you can also see uh, some of the projects that have graduated from OLS previously. Um, there's, there's loads and loads and loads, so don't spend too long watching. I am frightened to think how many hours of YouTube stuff we actually have there already. <laughs> um, and actually, a huge shout out. Um, Maya here has spent a lot of time transcribing the um, and fixing the transcription for some of these audio calls. And thank you so much for that, Maya. It's really valuable to fix the dodgy, the dodgy, dodgy transcription, which if you've been watching the Otter AI, you've probably already seen it say some weird stuff because um, it doesn't always get everything right. Um, and a couple of other notes, we have run to about 375 community members right now. And I love saying that number. How can it be that big? I don't know, but that's, that, that represents people who have been our mentors uh, for people in the cohorts. That represents people who've done expert speaking. Um, and <laughs> the Alien Training Institute. Oh yeah, that is, a, that, <laughs> that is a good one. And I'm guessing that's Alan Turing when it's not being mistranscribed. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, another favorite bad transcription of mine has to be when we talk about fair data and it starts saying things like fairy dust. And so, yeah, fair, fair data is fairy dust, let's be honest. Um, sorry, I'm very distracted. Um, oh yes, so there's 375 people. Um, they represent our mentors, our cohort participants, expert speakers, um, our organizers, our core facilitators, and probably other people I can't think of right now. Um, I have been listening to my own voice for too long, so I'm just going to quickly ask uh, Malvika, Berenice or Emmy, who's joined us, if there's anything you'd like to add about the organisation. I think it's fair to save a lot of time for questions because we already have lots of questions, but I have added two links in the bottom of our etherpad. If you're interested to read more, more about our history and where we want to go, it's massive documents. It's not a homework of any sort, but it's just if you're very curious. Thank you, Malvika. Okay, in that case, uh, Malvika, would you like to do some talking about the role and why it exists? Yeah, um, so first of all, you heard a lot about that uh, OLS had, had started sort of two and a half years ago now. And we've gone through some sort of evolution that we really envisioned that we didn't want to exist as a free organization. We didn't want to not pay the people we were working with. And there were quite a lot of social reasons why we wanted to find funding and build this particular position. So first of all, um, Yo has very recently started to work on 60% capacity. So she hasn't told you, but she's also doing PhD on the side and she was doing a full-time job before. So she is using this time to spend a lot of her work in OLS. Then Bernice, Emmy and I are also working full-time in another job and then working with OLS, which means that there are a lot of work that we need, uh, where we need support from someone in terms of coordinating, keeping us in, in time, keeping us accountable for the work that we've said in the past that we will do, but we haven't. So this person who is gonna be in this position will have 50% of their time dedicated to helping us organize the community. There will be a lot of opportunity to develop how that position would look like for them because there are many hats we four of us wear that we are very willing to pay forward or give forward so if you're interested in building your skill in the community management that's where this position can grow uh, if you're interested in building communication or social media or outreach related work that's where this position can grow um, but in general 
the, the 372 people that we mentioned need support in terms of communication and collaboration that we provide in OLS. Um, I don't want to go in detail of that because the second part is also something that I really think is very important to mention. So the remaining 50% of the position is for research. So we've run our program for five iterations. So there have been five cohort who've been trained and gone through the program. They build their projects, they launch their communities and they are still working in open science space. And we're in the fifth cohort of our, of our program. And one of the things that we want to be very much aware of that the knowledge that we teach in open science have majorly been developed in the global North, which is the developed country, USA, Europe, and all four of us, even though we come from different backgrounds, I'm from India and I have studied in India and I, I come from um, doing my PhD in Germany and then my entire career has been in Europe. So there's a lot of representation that even in my identity, I do not justifiably present, which is where this researcher would be helping us understand what we are teaching actually applies to the global South. So not just India, but Latin America, Africa, other developing countries or low income countries. So they would be doing some research uh, in helping us evaluate some of the data that we have collected uh, through survey in open life science by asking our um, participants about their personal journey, how much they have learned about open science. But we would like to go back to some of them working in different countries and see what is the transformative effect of open science science that they have had on them. So maybe after a year of being graduated from OLS, these people have started to work on different projects or have started to build different communities. In some ways, we want to understand, are there actually useful investment of open science training and mentoring that we are doing? Does it reflect in the communities that our participants come from? So as you can see that this is quite an open question. There will be quite a lot of social uh, ethnological, anthropological, and I'm probably just throwing these words just to let you know that there's a lot of elements that we can build into this program. And four of us will provide support in both the parts of the position, but we also have a community of experts who we would like to welcome in helping us design this program together. So this is going to be extremely collaborative position uh, we, we would really love for this person to come in and challenge a lot of work we are doing and help us improve in the ways that we existed to make it truly go globally, because I uh, really want to create a community which represents different voices and different interests and different people that we have. And I think that's definitely our strength in open life science. I'm going to open it to Amy or Berenice, who would like to probably add something to this. Okay, we are all very shy today, but but not really. We are going to probably go on to the questions. I wonder, um, Bernice, if you have it open. So we have questions starting from 56. Should we just go on one by one? Do you want to help us coordinate that part? Detail about overlap hours with UK time zone. Um, so, what did we say already? I always already forgot what this. So, I mean, we are mostly uh, so Malvika, you you are based in, based in UK. Uh, Amy and me more Central Europe. I think. Um, I mean, we are most working a lot asynchronously all the time. A lot of the things that we are that we are doing is completely asynchronous. We have one meeting per week currently uh the four of us um and i think the idea is to have uh at least one of you two hours i think what we say it's the day where the, that you can overlap so the working hours could overlap that at least you can we can coordinate because even if we do things synchronously and a lot of things happening on slack i mean there is times where you need to still exchange and you can have quick answers directly so at least one or two hours overlap time i think is what we recommend will be the best of the timing um did i forget something i think it was what 
we say it, we said it. Okay, good. Um, what are the main communication and management system that the OLS team uses? So I already mentioned Slack. So definitely Slack is the big, I mean, the one we use every day uh, and for most of the communication that we have. Uh, then we, we use a lot of Zoom like now uh, where we have, um, so at least the four of us currently, we have meetings every week um, and the person joining will probably, we will have probably weekly meeting also at least, um, and then more informal, less probably more informal meetings happening if needed, when needed. Um, uh, yeah, Zoom, a lot of Zoom, definitely. Uh, we use a lot of Google Doc for, I mean, and Google Sheet and everything to coordinate everything currently. We are trying to find a better solution to some of the management, but yeah, currently it's mostly Google Sheet, uh, Google Form, Google Docs, uh, Slack, Zoom. Um, I would say that, and the website. So everything is on in the website on GitHub. Um, I, did I forget something? Uh, yeah, GitHub. Yeah, thanks, Maya, for mentioning it. Um, and other parts for the note that we have for the um, for the court calls. I, I One think I would I... add is uh, for emails we use uh, Google Workspace, so basically Gmail, but Open Life Science branded. Yeah, true. And we have the Google um, the groups, the Google groups for for the different courts and for the different groups within the different courts. So a lot of Google-based <laughs> centered uh, tools, but yeah, it worked, what worked the best for us at in a collaborative, I mean, the really collaborative and asynchronous things we do a lot. Um, do we need to add preferences about part-time or full-time in the application and or can it be decided later on? I think it can be decided later on, uh, Phil. I mean, you, go ahead. Um, I think it's useful if people share. I mean, it's okay to change, for example, but um, when, when it comes to shortlisting, if we end up in a scenario where two people want it part-time and one person wants the research and one person wants the admin role, knowing that earlier on will probably help us um, figure out that jigsaw. So it's not mandatory, but it is useful is the way I'd put that. Going back to the working hours, Amy's comments is uh, in the chat is really, it's good to, so usually we are working 9 a.m., 6 p.m. in our respective time zone. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be the full, I mean, you'd, it doesn't have to be these full hours. I mean, I'm definitely not that, but yeah. Um, and so we are looking for at least two hours overlap over this time period it's what we mean so it doesn't have that you have to it's really depending also on the on the on the schedule so if you start working earlier or later it's just to say that what are you usually our hours and it's mine are a bit different I mean, but yeah it's just, uh, stopping early but yeah um baby no choice with the babies um what kind of opportunities are there for personal development? Okay, can I give that to someone else? Because I don't remember, we already discussed that, but I don't remember all the details of what the other outcome of, of the discussion. So Marika, you, uh, Amy, I think you already, we had this discussion. I, I, I can start, but I know uh, you and Amy were also in that discussion. So this position is, because it's a mix of coordination, administration, business, and research, uh, our hope is that the person would be able to define, or first of all, first they would be able to identify what they actually enjoy and what would they like to do in the long term. Um, so of course, we this position is quite time fixed because of the funding that we have, and we can't promise what would happen after that, but our aim would be to identify with this person in the position what they would like to do and we can identify more funding for them. But for themselves, this position would be a really great mix uh, that should expose you to different parts of the research, community building, organization level, because we are a very small group, 
uh, you would hear about a lot of things that generally happens at the leadership level, but it, it's a, in my opinion, it's a good exposure to different different types of skills that would allow you to identify what suits best your personal career development plan. Alongside, we also have opportunity for people to go on to trainings if they would like to. Um, there are a lot of uh, events and workshop that happens in the open science community itself that we advertise all the time for other people, but which is equally open for the members working in this position. Anything else to add, Amy? One thing that I feel, so OLS, um, it's a big community, as we mentioned, and there is like every day almost new advertisement for new position. So, and really a lot of interesting uh, things happening afterwards. So, and it's really nice to see all this uh, job advertisement post, uh, posted on the Slack of the community, because then it gives you an idea what are the possibility afterwards. And I really, really enjoy that, uh, looking at that. So I think it's something, as Malvika said, uh, it's, you can decide after, it's, it's helping to decide, I mean, give you an idea what are the possibility afterwards, uh, I would say. I'm not sure if it was uh, <laughs> meaningful, but I really enjoy that uh, in OLS. And, and that jobs would give that, I mean, link with the people and, also learning from the people what they are doing. I think it's really great for that and what are the possibilities. Berenice, your boss of this section. Yeah, true. I wanted to. Uh, I was lost um, <laughs> for a few minutes. Uh, you, Amy, anything else you want to add on that discussion? Nope. Okay, I go ahead. Uh, can you describe the working culture of the organization? <laughs> Which uh, how to? Uh, I would say as open as possible, as uh, as open, as kind, as inclusive, as I don't know what to say. Uh, I learned so much from you, Malvika and Amy, working with them and for the all communities. I mean, for me, for the last two years and a half, uh, wow. I learned a lot on, on many, many other topics and many a lot of things that opened my mind on, on, on the practice, on globally practice that happens in management everywhere. I mean, uh, what I'm used to it. And so uh, I don't know <laughs> what to say. So I would say a really open-minded culture and trying to make sure that everybody can find their place and their spot. And um, I can tell, from the team, uh, every time I mean, uh, okay, I got a, a small kids two years uh, two years ago, and Malvika, you and me were always supportive anytime because uh, I mean I couldn't commit to something or something. So a really supportive environment, I would say, open-minded, supportive, inclusive. I mean, all yeah, everything. So I think it's difficult to to. Um, yeah, it's really joy, uh, a joy to have the meetings every, every week together and to discuss and to think and to try to see how we can improve the things. What can we do to make uh, all the program even better and more open to everyone? And I really like that. So that is my feeling about the working culture of the organization, I would say. Um, yeah. And we try to take care of each other. I think it's the most important things to try to avoid burning out because we know that it's easy to burn out, especially when we like what we are doing. Um, and that is something we try to take care of for each other on that. And I think it's a really, really, I really enjoy this mindset here. Anything else you want to add to your Malvika or me? We love you too.
Thanks, Bernice. Oh, um, I, yeah, I, I think um, one thing I would add is we make a lot of mistakes. Um, and I think one thing that I've, I've really learned working with the rest of the OLS team is um, to not be afraid to make those mistakes and you know, simply be open about the fact that the mistake has been made and apologize for it and learn, take that as a learning opportunity and learning moment, right, very consciously. And with this, I think this mentality is actually one that, you know, we would love to see also in, in the person that is going to join the team eventually. Um, that, you know, is that, that li, li, like, I know this gets said too many times probably that, you know, there is no stupid idea, but with the OLS team, there really isn't because we often find ourselves proposing a lot of things. And I, you know, there are many ideas in my own head that I've told myself, okay, probably shouldn't do this. Probably this is stupid or too ambitious. And then I've gone to the OLS team, the rest of the team, and they've said, why not? Right. And we really want someone, you know, who will join us as Malvika was saying, who um, would be challenging our, our views and our perspectives, but also would be open to being honest and vulnerable with us. And of course, we have a part to build that culture ourselves as well. But we also will rely on you to, you know, be, be courageous, be, be open, be open-minded, as Berenice was saying. Um, and together we uh, will be, you know, making mistakes together and um, helping each other out as well in, the, in those occasions where we feel um, perhaps vulnerable or perhaps um, yeah, stepping out of our comfort zones in a way. So I'm just going to add to that part that Amy was talking about that, of course, we know that we have a lot of implicit knowledge because we've been throughout the journey of open life science. And if someone new comes in, they would have a lot to learn. And we want to allow that time and want to assure you that we understand that that will take some time but we would like to see this person to be our collaborator rather than a subordinate. So of course you will be doing a lot of things that we will ask you to, but it doesn't mean that uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have your own place to explore and own place to build what kind of work you wanna do. I, I think a part of the position uh, says that we would like you to invest certain percent of the time that you have in OLS and working with other value aligned communities. So open life science works with multiple communities because all our participants are building different communities. And we want you to really identify and learn from those work. So we don't want to bottle you just within OLS, but we really want you to explore different ways people are working, what are the good or bad ways that we can learn from and what culture you can bring in to help us develop better. Anything you want to add then? I think you've got it all beautifully. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Um, the next question, are there opportunities for training and progression within the world organization? Um, Malvika already mentioned, yes, definitely. So um, there, there will be uh, space for training, space for participating in workshops, um, participating in, uh, we organize this mentoring uh, by this mentoring training by professional by a professional organization. So you could take part of that. Uh, I mean, we do. There is possibilities to 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 training and progressions. Definitely, um, it's something. I mean, we tried, we also learn a lot all the time. So it's definitely something we would encourage. I mean, it's not, we are not forcing anyone, but I mean, we would encourage people to, for training and progression, definitely, I think. So, um, anything you want to add? Okay. The next time, what are the long-term expansion sustainability plan for the OLS program organization and team beyond 2023? And and all it's independent on research outcome or the or the grant. Oh tricky, really tricky question. 
Um, but I think, uh, I don't remember if Malvika or you, you mentioned, it, uh, one of you mentioned that, but it's part of the thing uh, of the, of the, of the position of, of the next two years is to try to figure out what can be the sustainability plan for OLS. Um, it's something we are trying to figure out now. We are trying to build, we, it will be par part of the plan for the next two years. And the person uh, will be part of that, uh, I mean, involved, potentially involved in, in this, uh, in that selecting and helping us building that, uh, defining this, this sustainability plan also. Did I miss something? Um, um, it might worth, be worth just adding. Um, so uh, the, the two grants that we have, the Wellcome Trust grant is the one that's going to be funding the position that we're recruiting for at the moment. Um, and the grant that we have from CZI, um, basically a specific part of one of our deliverables is, is taking our time to figure this out. Um, so that um, as, as since I'm working 60% three days a week, that will probably be a large part of my job. Um, and so I'll be very grateful to whoever comes to do the other the job that we're recruiting for, because right now I'm having to spend a lot of time um, coordinating our cohorts um, and not so much time looking at the sustainability. So whoever we select will be very, very instrumental in helping us uh, move forwards with this. The next part, uh, question is their flexibility in contract working hours. For example, uh, zero five FTE for X months to one FTE to the remain for the remainder. Um, I think I don't have the answer there. <laughs> so I think, and the principal, I would say yes, but I think I need you. Do you know? Uh, so the, we have a few constraints. Um, one is that I think we are time bound to two years for this grant. Mm -hmm. We haven't officially kicked off yet. Uh, Malvika, correct me if I'm wrong here, but that means that whilst that we could potentially span up to about two years um, and, and by, by you know, stretching that funding out over a bit longer, um, there, there, there is some hard deadline at some point where we, um, we couldn't just have someone half-time the whole time. We'd have to have either two half-time people or the ramping up so long as it worked within the um, two-year time frame. Yeah, I, uh, sir, I agree. We, this proposal is written for 24 months. The position is designed for one and a half years if the person is in full time. Uh, however, if someone goes on half time, we, cannot, we can definitely work out that 24 months because the clock hasn't started yet. The clock will start the moment the person starts working with us. So we can't go beyond 24 months with this funding. But again, as I said, if if someone joins in and they are looking for some funding opportunity to continue on working with us, we will have a full support in writing that proposal with you, making sure that if you're enjoying your work, you have some sort of opportunity in plan. But again, I'm just being very cautious because we can't promise how the world would turn out after two years. If, uh, but it, it, as, as also Bernice was saying, it's, it's our culture to support people. Uh, we would work with you knowing that we want to support you in your endeavors, if the OLS or if you want to move on to some other organization. Next, Malvika. Um, the next question is confirm, confirm application deadline on the web and social media. Closing is the 22nd of March, and on the PDF job application is the 20th of March. So I think the deadline is 22nd of March. Yeah, okay. So we need to update the PDF maybe. Um, <laughs> very good. Um, next question. How would you act in the case of things not working well in, in of the candidate of these jobs? And what would be the sign of not working well? Or oh, uh, art question. Uh, I need to think, I don't know. Malvika, you or me, if you have any ID now, I'll go ahead. Uh, currently, I'm need, I need to think a bit, I think. Wow, this is a question which I think is like really insightful. <laughs> um, it's like, I, I always like at job interviews, um, asking the person who's interviewing me, 
you know, what's your favorite part of the job? And just flipping it around. This feels like one of those like great job. <laughs> um, I would say the signs of not working well um, is not going to, I can say some things it won't be. So like coming, you're just starting work at 9.15. Is, we're not going to like get grumpy about, you, you know, we, we have a reasonable flexibility that we can, we can trust you to do the job. It'll get done. And if you can't do something, you'll let us know. Um, so it's never going to, hopefully, never going to be clock watching. Like, is it five o'clock? Yes. Oh, thank God I can run away. Um, which I suppose is re reasonably common in academic and academic related settings. Um, I would worry about the candidate if they <laughs> we're being rightly interviewed right now. I know I, I love reverse interviews. It's incredible. Um, I would worry if I think the candidate was um, not learning from mistakes. So everyone makes mistakes. I may have made a mistake in the PDF date uh, for this vacancy, for example. Um, but the worry would be if time and time again, the same things happened. And even after we've tried to put frameworks in to fix it, that sort of thing was still happening. Um, another one might be that we're, the person that we hire will need to be able to communicate with the cohort on a regular basis. Um, and they will need to be conducting research. So if people didn't feel confident um, in, in carrying out the basics of the skills, that, that can happen if they reach out to us and we talk about it and we figure out ways to go forwards and, they, and at some point they still don't carry it out. That's the sort of thing I would worry about. Um, but the biggest worry would be lack of communication. Um, so if you're struggling and you don't say, hey, I need help, that would be, um, I don't know if I'm making myself clear and I'm worried I'm digging myself into a hole here. <laughs> Anyone want to save me, Emmy Mavika Veronese? <laughs> I think I think that's very well put and I think I'm thinking about I'm currently employed by an organization how would they figure out that the that that I'm not working well right like I'm not putting the blame on the person I'm just going to give my example the point of not working well would be that I have been told to submit a report by x date and I just do not notify them if I'm running late you know, people can run late if I don't notify them. If I do not communicate with people, don't show up for meetings I have promised. So the, I would say that the accountability is the most important thing, is that if we commit to doing something and if there is a number of people depending on that particular job, uh, we should show up. And if we don't show up and if we don't let us know, like if I don't let my supervisors know or my colleague know that I need help or I need support somewhere, um, I might be not doing my job properly. So I hope that example works because, you know, you heard from Bernice, we have a cohort and you is coordinating that cohort and you would learn from seeing how we do things. And of course, as I said, first few months will be a lot about observing how we do things, learning from how we do things, and uh, you know, mistakes would happen when you do it for the first time or second time or even 10th time. But not learning from that, as you were saying, I would say is definitely a sign that this job isn't working out for you or maybe there is something that we need to sit down and work out why it's not working out. So yeah, I'm not saying that we, we will hire someone hoping that things won't work out or we, we can imagine what their situation will be, but we are always open to talk about it. We should have meeting as regularly as possible to exchange feedback or share concerns. So making sure that, you know, there's open room for discussion. So this problem doesn't happen in the first place. Can I add one more thing quickly? Um, that it will be very important that someone acts in line with OLS values. Um, which is to say that we try very hard to be inclusive um, and we'd rather, if we have to alienate someone, we'd rather that it be the someone who's being mean and awful to other people rather than letting someone stick around and be unkind and then let them alienate everyone else. Um, there's a lot more to that than in, in the OLS values. I think that's perhaps why I suggested earlier um, on lines 41 to 43, some of the posts are the things that we do that sort of embody our values around ally skills training um, 
captioning for calls, micro grants for participation, things like that. But it would be very important that um, people embody those. And that doesn't mean you have to be perfect, but merely that you work, work in, in line with them. That question is, is something like everybody, <laughs> please do ask your employer because this is an important question. Next one, what are the next steps in the application process after the interviews? Okay. Um, I don't remember in which, ah. what are the last things we decided? I don't, I lost track of, of, of our discussion, sorry. Uh, Yo, Marika, help, Amy. <laughs> so we have a committee um, of incredible OLS community members who are looking through the applications. Um, so we're going to make sure that two people review every application uh, to look at both the desirable and the essential criteria. Um, we do have a lot of... Um, okay, it's lovely to have you here, Shweta. Um, see you later. Um, yeah, we, we do have a lot of applications, um, so that it means that it's more likely that some of the things that are desirable will end up helping us make the decision rather than just the essential things. Um, but we, we're trying to make sure that we have a reasonably uh, diverse review committee, um, so that because we have applications from all around the world. Um, so the closing date is the 22nd. Um, that is anywhere in the world. And quite frankly, if you send your application at 12.15 on midnight on the, uh, the day, we won't be like, no, we've cut it off. You sent it 15 minutes too late. Um, so that's to say, practically speaking, um, in many places of the world, it'll be the 23rd before applications stop popping in. Um, we already have, I think, about 80 or 90 applications. Which, yeah, <laughs> there's, so there's, it's going to take longer, I think, than we expected just to get through the, um, the, the long list and short listing steps. Um, we probably will try and announce some sort of timeline at some point, but I don't want to commit to it because there's always a last minute rush and we haven't even seen that yet. There's still a few days for the last minute applications to come in. Um, but yeah, practically speaking, we'll make sure that every application people have looked at the CV, um, they have said, yes, you fulfill these criteria, and then we can figure out who we can actually put in the list to potentially proceed. Um, we're not fully sure. We may ask uh, for a task for people to carry out. If that task takes any significant amount of time, we will offer pay. We are not ever going to ask someone to do several hours of work for us for free. If it's a very short task, maximum, let's like say an hour, we may not offer pay. But anything longer than that, we will make sure that we're not stealing your time and labor. Um, we probably will have interviews as well. Um, we have to figure out what size the panel is because we don't want it to be 17 people staring down at you and making it really scary. Um, and we will try and share the interview questions beforehand so that you have a chance to prepare. Now, obviously, um, there will be questions in the flow of the moment that might not match that, but it will give you the basic idea of what the shape of the interview is if you're invited to interview. Um, we are sorry the number is so huge, as Malvika has said. Um, please don't be intimidated because we've seen so many incredible people, but we'd love to see a few more incredible people apply as well. Um, and I suspect that when we do go through the list, we'll be like, hey, I'm sorry we couldn't offer you the job, but please apply to continue to participate in RLS cohorts in the future because we won't want to lose contact with so many of you Um that's probably the clearest answer I can offer right now. When we know a better timeline, we will share it. Um, but yeah, th there are a lot. So it's, it, I don't want to commit to anything that's going to like put our review committee uh, into stress. <laughs> can I just add, uh, we would also like the person, um, I don't know when would that happen? Is it the part of the interview or post interview? We, we would like them to meet a few more community members who we, we, we really work closely with. So you have a chance to talk to them as well. Um, we still have to finalize if that would be part of the interview process or post interview process. Um, 
But if you have any other suggestion, please do share that with us because we are we're trying to develop the process as we are looking at the applications. want to add no oh, good Thanks. um the next last question i see in the ether part is is social or humanity background a prerequisite and the answer is not at all uh, i mean some experience in research is important um to help co-design the research and conduct the things but that's all i mean we would like to have the as much diversity i mean yeah no background in social or humanities is a prerequisite. I'm um, I don't know if it helps, but um, I, I haven't quite finished my degree, my, my, my doctorate yet. I'm trying to, I need to submit this year. Um, my degree will be in computer science, um, but I'm doing a lot of qualitative research, which is to say that we recognize that people may mix and match things that aren't always obvious. I mean, say for me, I'm bioinformatics background, so no social background humanities. Malvika, same. Uh, Amy, I'm never sure exactly what is your the background, but magic. Um, <laughs> um, neuroscience, uh, neuroscience and science mathematics. So yeah, we're we're quite sort of life sciences. Uh, that's where we. That's why open life science. But, um, but we're also learning a lot from folks in the community who have broadened our horizons into various areas of research. And I really love that part of being in you know, OLS. It's, it's really something um, Malvika mentioned, or you, I don't remember, that uh, all this project will be made in collaboration with the experts in our communities. So, if if the person lack a specific i mean doesn't have a specific uh, knowledge or something uh, we will try to find and and combine with experts from the community to be sure that this specific info, uh, aspect is still covered so that is something i mean we have a big community of experts we can we can ask for help there so it would be definitely part of the of the things um I think what that was the last question in the other parts. Do you have any further question um, that you want to ask? You can ask on the chat, you can unmute yourself, ask your question, and we will try to answer them. So I don't see a lot of questions. I just mostly, mostly comment directly. So I don't know. Do you, should we just, I mean, we can stay a few more minutes if you want to ask your question. We can uh, maybe stop the recording also because maybe some people, you may don't want to have your questions on the recording. Um, we will stay a few more minutes if you want to ask your questions uh, late at the end. Uh, yeah, so otherwise, it was nice to see you, all of you there. It's really exciting to see so many people interested in this position. Um, and 